In response to an Instagram poll, this Anking video will be about how to use pre-made decks alongside lectures. Be sure to follow us on Instagram so that you can answer our future polls and tell us what videos you want us to make next. Here we go. Okay, I've had tons of people asking me about this, so I'm just going to show you exactly how I do things. And just so you know, it's different than Med Shamim and some of those other methods online. I do leave everything in the deck, and I'll kind of explain that as I'm going. But, uh, you know, this is a brand new version. Uh, I haven't included images in here just for copyright sake with this video, but everything is unsuspended when you get it. My first recommendation is to either click whole collection or the whole deck. Uh, select everything with Command or Control A, uh, and then suspend. This add-on up here is the fast bar if you're interested in that, uh, or you can do Command or Control J as the shortcut, and so they'll suspend everything there. And then just as I'm learning, I use the tags, and I use the decks, and I use the search bar to just kind of try and find things as I'm going. So for example, if uh, I was watching a Pathoma video and it was in chapter one, I was watching this video, I would watch that video. Uh, a lot of times I'll actually have a second screen with the video and I'll have this on my main screen and I'll kind of go through these cards as I'm going. Uh, an important part of that, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is to have the date created. You just right click up here and then you can have that and sort by date created and everything will be in order. That's one reason I like to leave everything in the decks because if for example I delete this and hit enter it takes me to that card in where it was made with all the rest of the Zonky cards and Zonky the guy that made this kind of made everything in a logical order so it's just nice to see all the cards that are nearby it. Uh, that's why I like to leave things all in one deck just for the sake of getting the big picture. Um, but as I was going, if I was do this, I would go through these cards one by one to kind of make sure I actually understand the cards. Uh, again, you want to understand things before you use Anki. Anki is for helping you remember. So make sure, for example, that you understand why this is metaplasia. And then once I've understood all these cards, added my own notes here, I would select them all and I would unsuspend them. And then I would go back here and it would show me all the new cards and I would do those. So I tend to wake up in the morning and do all my reviews, the ones that show up here, and, and then I'll add new cards throughout the day and do them. But you can kind of do that however you want. So that's definitely what I would recommend as the first step. Uh, now I'll show you how I personally do things. Switch to my actual profile here. Um, as you can see, I have the same thing set up here. I leave everything in the same deck. I just click this one deck and do it. Uh, and then I have a separate deck here for my classes uh, because you do want to still do well in medical school in addition to doing well on step one. Uh, so we had a class on host and defense. That was the cards I made there. We had a class on molecules, cells, and cancer. And this is foundations. This was my first uh, one here. Uh, like I made my own anatomy deck with image occlusion. I made my own histology deck. Uh, and I'll, I'll just kind of show you those if we go into the browser here. Um, oops like my foundations deck, for example. Uh, now, an important thing I want you to note is that most of these cards are suspended. As soon as I finished that unit, I suspended just about everything unless I felt like it was useful to keep or it was step one relevant uh, and things like that. So, But most of my stuff I suspend after each relative unit. Uh, and I would recommend that you do that. But I keep those in separate decks just for ease. And then I keep everything up here in its own ease. Uh, and, and I'll show you a couple examples of this. If we go into this deck, I'll go to my statistics. Um, if we scroll to the bottom here, you can see, see everything here is suspended and I can see that I've done 42% of that deck kind of helps to keep me online. Um, let me come back out here and do the statistics for everything to show you why I recommend doing this. Uh, if we go to one year for the full collection. This is why I recommend doing it this way as opposed to having your settings with a certain number of new cards per day. So here's our, my foundations unit. Here's my uh, molecule cells and cancer unit, and here was my host and defense, and then the summer. So each unit in school had a different number of cards, um, and I actually added a lot of my own cards during the foundations unit. I'll show you that in a second. But these are basically all Zonky cards or LOL not a cop cards here, and they're different. And that's why I think you just unsuspend as you learn things, and then you do those new cards that day. Um, I was going to show you my foundations deck here because this anatomy and histology and stuff isn't necessarily covered as well in the Zonky decks. You can see I made 3,000 cards. 
But for these other units that were very Zonky related, I made 61, that was it, and I made 114. So I really didn't make that much. Um, during your first six months with this though, you probably are going to need to get really good at searching through Zonky for individual cards because you're not going to be able to watch Pepoma and stuff. So in order to help with that, we uh, on our YouTube channel, we've got lots of playlists. Definitely start with the playlists because they're great. This highest yield one I made is probably the best one. But specifically, there's a few videos that are going to help you. How to search effectively for relevant cards, the basics. Uh, another one on advanced and then this one I actually show uh, this is an actual PowerPoint from my class during that foundations unit where things don't necessarily line up as well with step one and I show how I go to Zonkey and go back to the PowerPoint and actually find all of the cards that I need so learning how to search with the Zonkey there's another one on advanced searching tools those are going to be very helpful videos in helping you to just kind of pull the cards that you actually need uh, I'm also just while we're here on the internet uh, we started this Instagram. We're not ever going to sell anything or whatever. I have zero desire to be an Instagram celebrity. I made it so that I could add stories here and actually show the day by day of how I'm uh, studying, how I'm pulling cards and what I'm doing along with my lectures. That was just easier than actually making a video. So uh, I also have an ask a question thing, but in the future there will be some stories here because we start school on Monday or tomorrow actually. Um, and so I, I'll put those in here. So follow us on here if you want to kind of see the day by day and how we're using Anki like that. That's that's why we started it. So now I'm going to show you my actual schedule. This is an actual thing that I typed up. Uh, first, I'm going to say because I know people are going to ask me. This is not. I don't use any calendar app. I actually have a handwritten calendar. I just made this just for this video, and, and all of this stuff here. I have a shared note on my iPhone that I share with a couple other people in our class, and we just kind of come up with a schedule. And this changes super frequently, uh, but I'm going to show you an example of how I do this alongside my lectures. So firstly, uh, during this unit, we had our, our teachers had given us a, a document of every bug and drug that they wanted us to know for each unit, or it was for every two weeks, and we kind of split it up. Next thing I did is I looked how many cards are under the sketchy treponema video, and there were 74 cards for that, 26 cards for that, so I looked. And of course, you're also going to cover things in lecture that aren't covered in Zonkey, that really aren't as detailed. So that's why I've got these question marks next to it. So I kind of figured out how many cards do I have to do this week? Uh, and then I figured out, okay, I need to add about 174 cards a day. So that's that. That's really simple math. And it takes practice. It's kind of tricky. You have to figure out which videos or which flashcards line up with things. Uh, but you just kind of figure that out as you go and practice. So I'll give you an example of kind of what we did. And, and we just kind of figured out that we needed to do assignments. We needed to add about Here's 150 cards, and we're going to review the lecture sites. I do recommend trying to keep up with your lectures so you still do well in class, um, but also trying to do the step one stuff because they kind of overlap. So as you can see, my actual schedule, I did my Anki reviews in the morning, then I did my assignments. I watched the Pathoma videos. I did the new cards. I watched the sketchy videos. I did the new cards. I tried to incorporate practice questions. And of course, we all have things like we um, you know, go to research meeting, we go to Midvale clinics. Every Monday, my wife and I have a family home evening. We do an activity and stuff with each other. So I plan all those things into my schedule. Uh, and now on this, I, I, like I said, you don't have to do it like this. You can do it however you want. But I just I note the things that are required. Um, and I note all of the videos that I want to watch. So here I'm doing 195 cards that day. So my new cards a day are never going to be the same. Um, and that's why if we go back to Anki and we look at my settings here, um, under like the Zonki decks, for example, I have new cards. Oh, it normally is set to 9999 uh, is what I would recommend. And I, I've changed that for the summer. But I would recommend doing that because it's uh, then you can just add whatever you learn. It's very important that you learn and then and then you do the cards. Very, very important. I can't stress that enough. But I also want to show you, so for example, on Wednesday, I had class all day long from 8 to 5. So I really didn't have much time to do other than do my Anki reviews if I wanted to spend some time with my wife that night. So um, I, you know, I added a couple new cards here. Uh, I think I actually did those during lunch. Um, but a lot of days I wouldn't even add new cards on Wednesdays. I would just do my reviews. And so that's why I don't think you need to set your Anki settings to add a certain number of new cards per day. Uh, on Thursday, for example, same thing. You can see I'm doing very similar stuff. And on Friday, it's also very similar. And then I actually usually plan out my my Saturdays. Um, this is just a joke we always put for each other on this shared note. Um, but my Saturday, I, 
I, uh, this is the semi-annual general conference for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so as you can see, I was doing that almost all day on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, if I didn't have this, uh, I usually am skiing or hanging out with my family or whatever on Saturdays. So I don't typically study on Saturdays and Sundays other than doing my Anki reviews. And that's because I'm typically going from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, on Monday through Friday. But I have friends that like to do shorter days Monday through Friday and study more on Saturday. It's totally up to you. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show you how I'm uh, finding out which cards I need to do. I'm adding them up so that, for example, I can see that I'm doing 195 new cards on this day, uh, but I'm not doing as many on the days that are busier. And that's kind of how I line things up side by side. And just keep in mind, this schedule actually changed quite a bit throughout the week as we were trying to figure things out. And that's why I have a shared note with other classmates so we could figure it out together. Uh, also really important, make sure you go on date with your, your significant other. My wife made me promise at the beginning of medical school, I would always take her on a date once a week. And we have, and it's probably the best thing I've done for medical school. Uh, now, last but not least, I'll show you what I do uh, with my lecture notes. Uh, as I'm going through the lecture slides really quickly, or I watch them a lot of times on two times speed, because uh, our, ours are not required, I will screenshot things if I feel like that is not, like for example, H HIV-2 is not really covered that much in the Zonky deck. So I just screenshot it in case it's important for the quiz. Uh, and then when I do get down to the quiz, uh, here's a great example right here, Mycobacterium avium complex, there's like one card on this in Zonkey. Um, if we go back here, you can see that I actually have question marks next to that. Um, so I screenshotted that slide into here. And then if I determine, oh yeah, this is probably something that they're going to test us on, I out here will write a question to myself so that I can hide everything over here, scroll over, so I can read that and it kind of becomes a flashcard in and of itself. And then I can test myself on it. And I have a bunch of those that I would test myself right before the quiz. And if it was something that I felt like was going to be on our final, I uh, would take it and I would put it into this deck. I would actually make a deck on this and I would make cards on questions that I had missed. So that's kind of how I recommend uh, doing that. I had friends that just made these into flashcards right off the get go. Totally up to you. Um, but find some method that works for you. Uh, and then just uh, because it's fun, here's what I've done. I, I This is my next unit that we're starting tomorrow. Uh, I have about five to 6,000 cards that I know I need to finish. How did I figure that out? We're doing metabolism and reproduction. So I went into the Zonky deck and I found out how many unsuspended cards I have in the GI and in the repro and in the endocrine decks because those are the decks that I'm going to be using. And so I want to finish those decks by the time I'm done. So I found out that's how many it was. And that means I need to add about 7,800 new cards per week if I want to finish everything by the end of the unit. And so as you can see, I put in things that are required and then I just kind of guessed. Well, I'm not exactly sure yet because we haven't started class. I just kind of guessed I'm gonna start with the physiology instead of starting with the pathology because that makes sense. And I'm, my goal is to add about 200 cards. Same thing, 200 cards. On the days that we're really busy and I'm in class all day, I'll add about 50 cards. So this is my schedule. This is what it looks like at the beginning before the week. And you can see there's a lot of question marks, so it'll change as we go on. So I'd recommend working with your classmates. Uh, the Apple Shared Note is great for that uh, or use whatever else works for you. Last little addition here, because people are constantly asking me, you know, what what resources are you using with your deck? Uh, obviously, the Light Your Deck is great because it's alongside Boards and Beyond. Zonki is a better deck, and and, and to be honest, as you get better at Anki, it's, it's a little bit easier, but this is the Medical School Anki Reddit page, and this is just the original Zonki post. I recommend everybody look at this uh, if you're using a Zonki-based deck. So if I scroll down here on the sidebar, uh, so this is my Anki overhaul, which uses Zonki as a base if you're using Blue Galaxies. This is the original Zonki link there, and there's the original LOL, not a cop, micro link. And uh, scroll down here, there's the original Lightyear link. I recommend you look at these because Zonki actually wrote, here's what he based that cardio deck off of. He used First Aid, Pathoma, and Costanzo. So uh, I typically lean towards using Costanzo and Pathoma to do those decks. Uh, I don't necessarily read through First Aid. I actually haven't even cracked it open. Uh, for that portion, I actually, a lot of the cards you can kind of read, or I'll use Boards and Beyond or whatever else to learn that. So. That's kind of what, if, if you read this, it'll be easier to know what resources to use as you're learning what things. Uh, for example, here's LOL Not a Cop Microbiology, and he explains what he did to update this deck. Same thing with Lightyear. Um, uh, they explain, and Lightyear actually does use Pathoma and First Aid. So just 
read these depending on what deck you're doing so that you actually understand what resources were used and then you can customize it like i said you can still use boards and beyond for zonki and last but not least i just want to uh this is really important you want to use question banks uh, Anki is not sufficient alone and so this is my first year and second year this is where I'll be taking step right here at the end of second year uh, I just finished summer so I'm currently starting this unit right here on metabolism and reproduction so what I did is to, after our molecule cells and cancer this is an eight week block about the last two weeks I was doing RX questions on just these topics at the end of host and defense same thing, about the last two weeks, I was doing questions on all the micro stuff and all the immunology. And, and now that I'm studying metabolism reproduction, I'm planning on the last two weeks here to do questions on that with the RX question bank, and I'll, I'll do that for all of these units through. However, right now, I'm starting the AMBOSS question bank, and I'm going to release a video on AMBOSS really soon because they are absolutely incredible. Um, but I'm going to start an AMBOSS going all through the year. And I'm like right now, I will do a random question on all topics that I've covered so far. So I'll do it on three, three groups. When I get to here, I'll include all of that. And so I'll be doing two question banks. And then starting in this time period here, I'll actually start UWorld and get into dedicated before I take step one. So I just want to make sure that you are including question banks. I didn't necessarily talk about that in the video as much, but they are very important. But that's how I use my decks along with the, the stuff and, and hopefully your zonkey will look just like this um, and you'll have something that looks like this where you've got a great streak and I promise it, you'll do really well. I and all of my friends that have kept up with our cards like this and done it like this, leaving it all in one deck with a separate deck for our classes. We've all been doing very well both on NBME assessments and in our classes. So best of luck. Let us know if you have questions. Be sure to follow us and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Thanks for learning with the Onking. Be sure to subscribe to our channel as well as follow us on Instagram and Facebook for daily tips and tricks at OnkingMed. Also, here's the email if you have any questions or suggestions for new videos.